And good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm a former English teacher, high school English teacher. I want to do something. I want to give you a shout out. Uh, but I want to give you a shout out in the spirit of shout outs that we gave when I was in J.P. McCaskey High School as an English teacher and choir director. So whenever someone would do something phenomenal, either in choir or English class, I would say shout out. And the students got to the place that they realized that that's what I expected back. And so that's what I expect back now. Let's try it. Shout out. Shout out. All right, that was OK. But they didn't say shout out. <laughs> they gave me it with force and vitality. Shout out. Shout out. That is for you, for being in these seats that you're in today. It took work, it took applying, it took inspiration, it took encouragement, and you made it. And so I wanna talk just for a few minutes around what to do while you're here, particularly in the area of office hours, <laughs> impact, and what I describe as the education ecosystem. Let's start with office hours. Use them, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you can clap for that because that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Did you just hear your faculty? Did you just hear the individuals who are here for you? And the fact that you have opportunities to, you, to take advantage of time with them is tremendously important. It requires you to find the time. It requires you to find the courage. Sometimes we're like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what I just set up the office hours. As a matter of fact, when I came here, which was seven years ago, I was coming from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I had, done, I had been a high school English teacher. I'd been a high school principal. I'd run a nonprofit, a chief academic officer. I'd been blessed to do many things. And so when I got the opportunity to come here to teach, I was really excited about it because I love teaching. We love teaching. <laughs> what I had not anticipated was the power of sitting down with individual students to hear your story, for you to hear my story, and for us to think deeply about how to change one thing. That's what happens in office hours. And it was during that time during office hours, when I would have students come up to me and they'd set up the office hours, a question would ultimately come up consistently, and it was this question, what should I do? Particularly in the spring for the master's students when you're trying to find a job, and for those doctoral students as you're sort of getting out of your program, this question will come up, what job should I take? Can you be a reference? Can you, be a rec can you write me a recommendation? Which we all do, we love doing. But it occurred to me after several meetings, but I, I'm not sure if that's the right question. And so I want you to ask a different question today. And you've heard it in some ways alluded to already, and that is, what impact do I wanna have? Because the fact of the matter is, and the Bureau of Labor Statistics points this out, you will change what you do multiple times. But ultimately, the question that you should be unpacking on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly when you have time like you have here, is what impact do I want to have? And it was through that questioning that I actually, during office hours and thinking after meeting with students, as a matter of fact, many of the faculty do this, we do vision boarding, so we have whiteboards in our office and we talk with you about the past, what classes you're taking and the future you're aspiring to have. It was during that time that I came up with an idea, in some ways inspired by students, which is the pre-K-12 education ecosystem. Because what I realized was that oftentimes we ask these questions of impact and the ultimate question is, how do we actually have that impact? Once you answer that question, then you begin to ask the question, how do I have that impact? And so I want you to introduce real quick this ecosystem, which starts with this question of impact. 
and then goes to possible ways to have that impact, particularly in uh, the pre-K-12 systems. There are schools, there are districts, there are LEAs, SEAs. Many of us want to go back to those. Many of us are coming from those. As a matter of fact, I spent about 15 years, as I alluded to early in those, teacher, principal, district leader. But then while in that space, I realized that there are parts of that ecosystem that we don't often think about, like local organizations, community-based organizations, faith-based organizations. As a matter of fact, I spend a lot of time here talking about the intersection of faith and education. Faith plays a huge role in lives of educators. It plays a huge role in the lives of our students. It plays a huge role in the lives of our communities, especially the more marginalized and vulnerable communities. They end up relying on faith in deep ways. Why is it that we and education then ignore faith? Because of the separation of church and state. So how can we be more intentional around building bridges between our school systems and faith-based organizations? There are also policy and advocacy organizations that actually shape the context of what happens in pre-K-12 systems. There are technical assistance providers, organization, provider organizations. As a matter of fact, when I was at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, one of the things that we did a lot of is fund technical assistance organizations because the things that were in the blue, and there's a paper on this, you won't understand it just from this talk, but there's the things that were on the blue, in the blue, the schools, the districts, states, were being asked to do new things. And so they needed technical assistance in order to do those new things. Common Core State Standards, new teacher evaluation systems, set by policy and advocacy organizations. Investors, foundations, some of you are saying, you know what, I spent time in the pre-K-12 system, now I want to see what the world of foundations look like. Perhaps I want to be a funder. Perhaps I want to understand what it takes to get something funded in the ecosystem. Research and evaluation organizations. And ultimately, there, I always put other up there because I'm sure there are other things that I'm not thinking about in businesses and corporations. Pre-K-12 education ecosystem gets back to this notion that Ebony talked about, about organizations and the fact that things happen inevitably in organizations. You start with the first question, what impact do I want to have? Not with the ecosystem itself. What's the impact that I want to have? Because eventually, you're, you're going to go in multiple parts of this ecosystem over the life of your career. So the questions, what impact do I want to have over the next three to five to 10 years? If you come spend time with us, hopefully you'll be thinking about that question on an ongoing basis. What parts of the education ecosystem can I envision myself having that impact, whether it's the ecosystem that I use or some ecosystem that you would add to? And then how do I leverage the rest of the ecosystem to ensure impact? One of the reasons why I like this idea of an ecosystem is it suggests that you can't do this work, you can't have impact from one part of the ecosystem. The whole nature of the ecosystem suggests interrelatedness, interreliability. All of it has to work together. I want to end with one of my favorite poems by John James Ingalls. In this poem, the word opportunity is speaking. Opportunity is personified. And I'll share the poem with you because it's speaking to you today. Master of human destinies am I. Fame, love, and fortune on my footsteps wait. Cities and fields I walk. I, I walk. I penetrate deserts and seas remote. And passing by Hubble and Martin Palace soon or late, I knock unbidden once at every gate. If feasting, rise. If sleeping, rise before I turn away. It is the hour of fate. And those who follow me reach every state mortals desire and conquer every foe. But those who hesitate, condemned to failure, penury, and woe, seek me in vain and uselessly implore. I answer not. I return no more. The fact of the matter is you have an amazing opportunity to sit in the seats that you are sitting in. We have an amazing opportunity to work with you. Why? So that you will have impact 
and create opportunities for others. Welcome to Harvard.